Hello friend and welcome to this video. Thank you for being here and watching. <laughs> so this video is about what makes a great spiritual teacher. Um, so what makes a great spiritual teacher? A person that you look up to, that you, who you admire, who you want to be like, not fully, but who inspires you. In my experience, there are many teachers, I've had many teachers throughout my life, um, and there's some that I find very, um, what's the word? I can't think of it. Um, inspirational, you know, inspiring uh, people who I look up to, who I want to be like. Um, and there have been a couple of those people in my life who I think, wow, like, I would love to have your abilities or your lifestyle. And, but what makes a spiritual teacher? This question was asked to me, um, yesterday. And I was like, wow, yeah, you know, like I'm yet to find somebody who is a master in my life who I can really look up to in many areas of lifestyle, diet, um, health, vitality, uh, spiritual gifts. I've had close um, people in my life, teachers and masters, who I really, you know, look up to but they haven't always been available physically or they haven't been wanting, willing to um, to be a teacher, to be my master, <laughs> I guess. And that's what we want. We want to have a teacher that we look up to and we were like, yes, master, you know, we, and not in an ego way, but it's admiring them in a very positive way. So, um, and it, this really blew my mind actually. Um, my partner, she said to me, you know, she was speaking to her guide and her guide ages ago said to her, well, before these masters, before these teachers, where did all these teachings come from? They came from above. They came from spirit. And that is totally true. That really blew my mind yesterday. Out of the past week, I think that's something I really learned. So I thank her for that. She, she's amazing. So um, it's really true, you know, there's so many masters out there, people who have reached a stage of enlightenment or heading to ascension, I guess, or spirituality, um, fine tuning themselves. But really it's the, it's the higher masters up in the ethers, up in the astral, on the other side of the physical, uh, on the other side of the veil. Um, those are the ones I guess we need to tune into. But here on earth, you know, what makes a good spiritual teacher? And I believe, I mean, this is my truth. This might not be yours because it depends on your stage of learning. There are completely many different masters and teachers out there, um, workshop leaders, teachers, people who guide, people who are make really good teachers, people who, depends what, let's, let's cover the, the aspect of of um, a spiritual teacher who do spiritual workshops and this may cover sound healing, um, hands-on healing like Reiki, crystal healing, um, out-of-body experiences, lucid dreaming but also health. I think it's balance. Now this yeah this struck my mind yesterday really blew my head, <laughs> blew my socks off really because it's like I, I'm yet to find a really good spiritual teacher in my life who is is in a higher alignment to what I am doing and although my partner said to me well I am my own master yeah true but I still need that guidance I still need somebody who can direct me and you know assist me and teach me and that's why I've had I guess a number of different teachers in my life who have been very inspirational uh, I'm not going to name names for example, there was a teacher um, who was very physically fit, who would always keep active, um, who ate super clean, um, would always watch their 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 diet, um, mainly raw and alkaline, um, always had good fresh spring water, um, were vegan and fruitarian. Um, didn't take any supplements at all, but they relied 
primarily on the foods to fuel their body and sunlight. And but they kept they kept super fit. They liked to not for bulk, but to tone their body and keep it active. And they were super strong. They fasted a lot, uh, sometimes for long periods of time, and they were super strong. And that person, a teacher in my life who I'm no longer now connected with, um, really inspired me to be more on a fruitarian path. And I was in awe of this person and just really fascinated. But there are other aspects of this person, this teacher, who wasn't in alignment at all, which I end up finding bad things about. And there are bad teachers out there, really bad, misleading teachers who will lie um, because of the money aspect. So that was one teacher, and that taught me a lot about cleansing, um, fasting, like salt water flushes, flushing up the body, keeping active, keeping fit, keeping the energy circulating. So that was one teacher. Another teacher I had was an amazing uh, martial art artist. So was very fit and strong, extremely strong, but knew a lot about energy within the body of Qigong, uh, Tai Chi. They knew a lot of self-defense and yoga, and they could change the energy within a person to be stronger. Um, absolutely phenomenal. They ate meat. Wasn't interested in that side, but their their practice of of energy was phenomenal. Really, really amazing. Um, so that was one teacher for me. Another teacher was in the realms of mediumship. Um, absolutely phenomenal. Um, took me under their wing, uh, traveling across the country, uh, well, U UK and England, um, to teach me about mediumship, uh, to do platform mediumship. Did a little bit of that bit rusty now I used to do it um, but I got let down um, they were saying that spirit were telling them to do things which was not really in alignment with love and I was really questioning this person and the whole movement of, of uh, mediumship because I was like your guides are telling you to do this They're like that no spirit wouldn't tell you to do that but unfortunately this person was a bit of an alcoholic and I didn't look up to this person in the end. I started to see an evil, negative side. And I know that we're not all perfect, but when you have a teacher who is consuming drugs or alcohol, or has an addiction, it's like, okay, what can you teach me? Um, but I'm now no, no longer looking at you as, as a master. Um, but, you know, masters take on many forms, not just in teachers, but also relationships. There's been many relationships in my life who have taught me a lot about myself, and those have been the biggest, biggest teachers. Another teacher that was in my life um, taught me a lot about lucid dreaming and our body experiences, and I just loved being around that person, and uh, they just introduced me to a whole different new world. Um, so yeah, I thank them for that. Um, their diet was a bit more in alignment and they were quite a, you know, just a very interesting person to be around with. But unfortunately, people people change. Um, or oh, they were always like that. So there was a lot of disharmony and distrust and a lot of lying and um, making up stories, which I found in the end. Um, so I didn't like that at all. So yeah, these teachers I have to pull away from. Um, and again, I'm not saying names or anything because it's this is not the intention of the video. This is intent. This is an idea of what's out there in the world. Is that there are a lot of spiritual teachers out there, masters who they're on their own journey here. This is why we're here on Earth. Um, there are some really powerful individuals out there who have mastered great energy, phenomenal. Um, there was one person who I never really trained with, but who I encountered in my life who had a phenomenal energy that when I met this person, um, this was at a, a festival, um, their energy just blew me away. They were connected to angels. Um, they were an amazing teacher um, who introduced me to, to energy and meditation, um, but I only met them for a very short time. But I still, to this day, I believe they are still practicing their, their same um, 
teachings, which is beautiful. Um, but we never connected really and don't live close together. So nothing was in alignment there physically to be a teacher. But it would be nice to be, you know, having a teacher eventually. Um, so yeah, what makes a great teacher? It depends on your path. I mean, my path, I don't know really where I'm going. I'm, I know it's a spiritual path where I'll be teaching others and I have done that. But in the past sort of 10 years or so, on and off, I've had a lot of earthbound lessons I've had to encounter for my own uh, growth, my own understanding, more self-love and giving. And there was a time many years ago where I was very depressed and low and I, I was in a relationship which this person treated me horribly. And I said, like, I've been in a number of relationships where I've had, I've really, really loved a person. I found them phenomenal. And I mean, this one particular individual, they, they act very clean, um, but they smoked and they drank alcohol and they did do drugs. But there was another part of them which I really found really inspiring. Um, their wisdom, their depth, their energy was beautiful, but they had a lot of un unhealed trauma with inside them, and they ended up becoming quite abusive to me um, and a lot of people around me, and so that isn't healthy. But there was aspects of this person who I really adored and really loved at the time that it was hard to escape because when you see these other attributes and qualities in a person, that you wanna, you, know, you love them. But, you know, what? it took a long time for me to understand, okay, don't take any disharmony and hate from a person. You know, the person loves you, they will love you non non non-stop. So yeah, I had a few relationships in my life, very deep relationships, uh, romantic relationships. Well, wasn't so romantic, but those were biggest teachers. They taught me a huge part of myself because if I hadn't met them, I probably wouldn't be the person I am today. Um, so yeah, what makes a good spiritual teacher? This is my truth, okay? You might have a completely different outlook. Perhaps you are a Kundalini um, a therapist person, a practitioner, Kundalini practitioner, and so you strive to, you know, have those teachers, and that's fine. Perhaps you're more into yoga. Yoga doesn't do anything for me. I don't know why. It's, uh, I look forward to being more flexible in the future and doing more things like that but I need something a bit more active. I've never felt amazing after yoga. I'm just like, okay, is that, <laughs> that's it. Meditation, breath work, intense stuff works well for me. Kundalini yoga works really well, but normal yoga doesn't. So my truth is I need a teacher in my life who eats super clean, okay, sugar-free, um, you know, vegan, fasts, keeps very active and fit, who has amazing intuitive abilities, clairvoyance, they can, they are a lucid dreamer, they tune into realities, um, they are in touch with their guides and their spirit team, and um, they have dreams with me and they are able to communicate. I mean, this is a teacher, a master, which I would love to have manifest into my life. And I guess in the past few years, as a person who I would love to manifest. And um, although I have some aspects of those in, in a partner, uh, having a teacher is completely different. Somebody who can guide me. Now, it's not about being judgmental and um, saying, oh, you know, I, you know, I don't want to be around people who eat meat. Do, you know, people, are free to do what they, they want to do. If they need meat in their life, if they need dairy, I have no judgment about that, but I don't do it myself. I'm open to it in the future, things might change. I might be in a situation where I actually do need some meat or I need some eggs or dairy. I can be flexible, but I don't eat it now at the moment. Things could change, but I know the benefits of eating clean and healthy and um, there's actually a video I watched the other day of a guy who ate only dog meat for like two weeks and he was surprised that um, he felt amazing because it's me, it's, it's natural. The thing is when you change your diet to be more, 
high vibratory foods that are close to nature as possible, then you're going to feel good. Apart from all the e-numbers and sugar and preservatives that you're consuming, your body doesn't know what to do with it. Same as bodybuilding. If you have like powders, you live on powders after having like protein powders after working out, your body doesn't really know what to do with that. It will absorb some of it, but it's not normal. Even though it's taken years to develop and you know evolve this body, uh, not my body, but the human race, we still haven't adapted to certain supplements and powders. And but when you mix it with whole foods, that is the best. I've seen a lot of bodybuilders out in poor countries in the world, um, hot countries, for example, Gambia or India or you know Africa and. They've made weights themselves. There's a few people I've, you know, who are on like YouTube or just done some TikToks videos, and they just made some weights out of concrete, and they're eating beans and spinach and lentil and chicken, and they're getting good size to themselves. And some of them are even vegan. So, um, and there's people out there who are ordering all these big bulk supplements and stuff. Okay, it helps somewhat, but nature is the best way. So yeah, I mean, I would love to manifest a teacher in my life who is more connected to me on my path, who encourages me, who you know I'm in alignment with, um, with you know sound healing, um, out body experiences, lucid dreaming, uh, alkaline diet, sugar free, mediumship, sensitivity. I mean, that's my path. And uh, you know, I want to be able to look after this person and think, wow, like, yeah, I want to be like you in the future. It's hard to find these individuals because not everyone is like ourselves. And I know that I can be a bit of a recluse. Um, I used to be very outgoing many years ago, but as time has changed, I found that I prefer my own company or just some alone time with me and my partner or go for, I like a quiet life. I don't like pubs and bars. I find them very, very draining. I don't know what it is about alcohol. I don't have any traumatic things in my past about alcohol. My father or my parents weren't drunks. Didn't really have major relationships around me who, who were drunk. So, but I used to drink a lot many years ago and I can, I, I've seen where it takes people. Um, and regarding energies, you know, if you're doing spiritual work and you're attending a retreat, there should be no alcohol at all. I was having this conversation with my partner the other day and and she agrees, like, you know, if you're doing a spiritual workshop, especially like mediumship and healing and energies, closing up, opening up in prayer and closing, especially if you're opening up in prayer and leaving it open the whole time, not closing down, then, um, you know, you're, you're open for attack from other entities and there are entities and mischievous spirits out there who will not, who will take advantage of, you know, vulnerable people. And so if people are going out drinking, which I've seen a lot of, um, a lot of spiritual circles, people like, feel like I could drink and I'm thinking, it's not a spiritual way of life. I could be judging there, fair enough. But for me, a good spiritual teacher is somebody who doesn't do those things, who goes to therapy, who gives that therapy, who um, you find inspiring and helpful and who is well organized. Um, somebody who is on a such high level of master that you want to follow. And um, yeah, I'm yet to find those individuals um, and I'm sure they're out there. And most likely I'm describing a person who's very in tune with themselves, who's humble, has no ego. And they may not be a person who is advertising themselves as a master at all. They might be a very simple individual who are very intuitive. Take a friend of mine. Um, we all have our own hang-ups and issues. There's one person in my life who I absolutely adore for their mediumship abilities, but they won't go public. They won't charge for their services. And I would love to learn from them even more so. But... Um, they are in their own ways, in their own conditioning, that they can't charge for their own energy. But yet they're drained every time they give a, give a reading for five hours. They're speaking to spirit and giving a message and they don't charge for it. Not even some food exchange. So there needs to be some form of exchange with a master. Um, either you help them with their retreats in exchange, 
that you are always there by the side as like um, an apprentice um, learning and helping one another because a master a teacher master master teacher they need their their closest followers to help them with PA admin helping set up the space and in exchange they can give teachings and being next to them and I had that with a few individuals in my life a few teachers and they appreciate that so much um, that they want to learn and that's how it should be but are we all masters part of us are but this is why we're here on earth to learn these earthly lessons first if you haven't dealt with your stuff from childhood from past traumas if you're not clean thinking clean eating then if other things are coming up to play then they need to be cleared anyway I'm probably rambling a little bit um, it's important to have a teacher a guide and we have spirit guides but we need a good teacher a good master in our life to help encourage us to push us to motivate us um, and sometimes that's in a form of exchange of money or services or help um, but the most important thing is that the master and teacher they learn together you know the, the, the teacher was once where the pupil is and the pupil is trying to get where the master is but in between that is a compassion of helping and learning and although the master the teacher master knows most of everything they often forget the very simple things which is like an adult and a child the the child teaches the adult remember how to play how to be playful and the adults being serious and sometimes it can bring out the childish the inner child within us which is healthy it's about balance hope this video has helped in some way I hope you have a master a teacher a teacher master um, whoever it is that encourages you my advice to you ending this video is not follow them completely because they may not be the person that you expected to be but take what you need to learn from this individual whoever you're following online if it's it could even be some of my videos if you like my gong playing or other stuff that you listen to I'm not perfect so don't follow everything I do because it might not be in alignment to you but people who are close to you in your life that you go to workshops that you go to retreats I'm not saying everyone is is perfect not everyone is evil but we all have our problems and issues but you know you may disagree on some things that they do but my advice ending this video is take what you need you know it is your own journey your own path of truth and if something is in alignment that's okay but focus on the things that that teacher is giving you because you don't have to agree with everything what they're teaching you may not be in alignment of your path but you can take on board and learn the things that are very important for you so yeah listen to the things that you need in that moment in that time and if you're not ready for the other stuff that's okay but the most important thing is to be humble take what you need and be your own master that is the lesson until next time thanks for watching if you got this far um, give a like on the video that helps to support the channel leave a comment down below if you'd like to express anything you liked in this video and I'd love to hear from you until next time I'll see you in another video